Hi there, welcome to Future Looks. I'm Eric. We're going to take a preview uh, look at our new uh, Z68A GD80 from MSI. And of course, you see here it's a B3 stepping, meaning it's using a, a B3 revision Cougar Point variation. A uh, couple of the features that uh, are built into this are Virtue, Lucid Logic's Virtue, giving you access to the integrated. Uh, graphics processor that's on Sandy Bridge and of course access to the Intel Smart Response technology using an SSD. So we're going to unbox this for you here in just a sec. Z68 GD80 here sports a little extra VRM, uh, better power design, 12 phase Dr. Moss uh, or Driver Moss as it's called, uh, CPU power management right around the socket. Uh, that's all in intended for a little extra overclocking you might see on some of these uh, Z68 platforms. Now just because it has integrated video doesn't mean it's a, a weak platform at all. That's why they've added the, that kind of a phase, power phase management. Now the, some of the components on here are high capacity capacitors. Those are the flat little square ones that you've seen on some of these uh, motherboards uh, tan with a tandem core. Uh, also super ferrite chokes. They take a those components take a beating, especially when you uh, need that kind of high current going to your CPU socket. Of course, solid state cap caps to keep uh, to meet the industry standard, keep uh, some clean power going as well. Uh, Built-in features, supercharger, USB uh, for powering up your iPod type devices, of course, and uh, or any other small portable device you might have. Instant OC on the uh, MSI Control Center, very good software. And of course, THX True Pro Studio Pro, a little extra audio quality built to get out of the uh, Realtek integrated audio codec that's on here. So let's pop this open right now. All right, standard to this uh, bundle accessories is uh, PCI bracket here. This goes on the back. It gives you a couple extra USB 3.0 slots if you don't already have enough. Power adapter cables for SATA from 4 pin to SATA power in case you need those. Uh, some people still have some of the legacy power supplies, so they need a little extra help. Four uh, SATA cables, white tips. Two are 90 degree, the others are standard. Your IL shield, matching black. Got to look good for, with your computer case. Your NVIDIA SLI or Crossfire bridge. Now, these are always extra handy. The little boost, uh, little half inch headers that pre-attach to your cable, your case's cabling, and then you can pl place them on the motherboard. Uh, and of course, it's really hard to, you can't get these wrong, so there's only one way they're going to fit. Some voltage leads here for plugging on the board if you want to do some monitoring while you're doing some crazy overclocking. Maybe an LN2 uh, secret mission or something. Got a quick installation guide, a thick user's manual, of course many languages, helping you uh, go through everything you need to do to get set up from the BIOS to hardware installation. Driver CD, can't get there get up installed without some of the drivers. Of course, uh, another software piece here for the extra software that comes bundled on the disk for getting set up. And a cool little quick guide. Nice little presentation here to give you an idea of what it is that you're act you actually just bought. All right, step aside, it's time for the board. So as you can see, this is your Z68A-GD80 motherboard. Very clean layout, uh, very attractive heat pipe coolers here on the VRM themselves help cool things off while you're doing some high-end uh, overclocking otherwise usually it's just there for preventative uh, heat measurement prevention you've got uh, quite a few sockets that are built in here that use your headers just pre-attach those to your case uh, any case wiring you might have they plug into one place pretty easy to do you've got your proprietary USB 3 which works with the PCI bracket got three PCIe 2.0 slots. Uh, naturally the board supports two-way uh, NVIDIA SLI and of course two-way Crossfire X. Uh, it's just two cards at a time. Uh, down here at the bottom got your OC Genie 2 for easy overclocking. For those on a 2600K Intel processor, uh, simple press of the button, restart of the system and you're running at 4.2 and you don't have to do anything in the BIOS the board is quite capable of running that 24-7 well, for as long as you can stand it. Here at the bottom you got your THX Pro Studio Kodak here. That gives you a little extra quality for those who might be watching some, doing some media 
uh, tuning on their system, perhaps uh, playing some games, you get some cleaner performance out of that. Uh, here on the back we've got your six analog standard ports so you can connect your uh, choice of speakers, Creative Labs or something from Antec, maybe Corsair. You got your two video out here. This is a DVI and a HDMI out, latest form, latest interface. Those give you access to Sandy Bridge's integrated graphics. For users on Media Espresso or doing any transcoding, that's a whole lot of performance just off the processor itself. Uh, otherwise, you can uh, have two monitors running at a time, one off your video card, play your games, and one off your uh, graphics, uh, your video out here if you wanted, and that'll give you a little extra productivity. Got your marked USB 3.0 in blue and your standard USB 2.0 in black. We also have a couple extra ports here, your standard Firewire, which uh, doesn't get used a whole lot these days, your optical out, SPDIF, and PS2 for mouse, keyboard sort of function. The memory slots here support up to a 2133 megahertz. Of course, we've seen them go higher, uh, easily reaching 2200 megahertz with DDR3. Uh, best kind of memory to use, of course, would be something like some HyperX Genesis that's been tuned for this. They've been kind enough to send us enough, plenty of samples to push these boards, to make sure they do get to 2133 megahertz. And, Setting in the XPMP profile in the BIOS, not, not a problem at all. Around the socket here, you've got your S little ferrite chokes here, super ferrite chokes that are marked with an F SFC. Right next to those, your high capacity capacitors. These guys are doing a really good job of providing stable, uh, supporting the phase uh, power that goes straight to your processor. Can't do any overclocking if you're not that stable. Right next to the 24 pin here, you've got your voltage uh, ports or header. That's for those of you who want to do some voltage tuning. That's these little guys right here. Just plug them in here. You can bend them off the side. Won't crowd your 24 pin. Grab your meter and if you're trying to push uh, push your system to set some kind of record, that's what you want right there. You can do quite a bit of tuning. Here's your six SATA ports. Uh, SATA 3 gigabit per second marked in black. The wider your SATA 6 gigabit per second got an extra port here, horizontal port, uh, right in line here with the VGA. Most users are going to end up wanting to use these anyway. Uh, you have that access uh, without uh, any problems here going off the side of the board. And of course standard uh, fan headers going around the system. Overall these are very very lean running motherboards, very clean power. Uh, you'll be impressed by the uh, efficiency you can get off of these. And the only other special note is their six pin auxiliary here to help uh, power these PCI slots. The latest uh, NVIDIA dual graphics video cards, dual GPU GTX 590s consume quite a bit of power and so do the ATIs. So this is just to help make sure you don't have issues. Standard video cards, you're not going to have a problem. That's only the dual GPUs we've seen these that extra power come in handy. We're going to uh, include this in our roundup, which you can continue, which you can check on our website later on, and we'll see how it does. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you again soon.